we're back in section 2.1. This video is to continue from where we left off. We were talking about uh, quadratic functions and talking about standard form and vertex form. So what I wanted to do in this section of uh, this video is to show you how to use completing the square to convert standard form into vertex form because when you're graphing or sketching the graph of a parabola, knowing the vertex is key. So I have an example here. Given f of x equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 1, write the function in vertex form. So this is standard form, so I'm going to rewrite this in vertex form, which means it is key that I complete the square. So my first step here will be the two terms that contain the variable, take the lead coefficient, factor it out of those two terms. So I'm going to factor 3 out of 3x squared, which will leave x squared, and a 3 out of minus 6x, which would leave minus 2x. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space, I'm going to put the parenthesis, and then the plus 1 stays out here. I'm not factoring out of that. So now I complete the square, something we talked about in the review, uh, prerequisite section, and we take half of this coefficient and square it, which would be negative 1 squared is positive 1, so I add 1. Now before you jump the gun and subtract 1 on the end, I didn't really add 1. I know it looks like I added 1, but I didn't really add 1. I added 3 because this 3 is going to be distributed over the terms in this uh, set of parentheses. So the 3 will be times the plus 1, I've added 3. To balance that, instead of adding 3 to the left side, I'll just subtract 3, because adding 3 and subtracting 3 doesn't change the value. So now I'm going to rewrite this with my quantity squared. I'm going to write it with my binomial squared here, and of course this is going to be minus 2. Now, what do I get in here? Well, what's being squared in the first term? That's an x. What's being squared in the last term? That's a 1. What sign goes in the middle? Is it a minus or a plus? Well, go back to here. To get the middle term to be a minus 2x, this is going to have to be a minus sign. If this was a plus 2x, this would be a plus sign. So whatever the sign is in front of the middle term, that's going to go right here. And now I have it in vertex form. My vertex, even though it doesn't ask for it, would be, remember, it's in the form x minus h, so this is x minus h, this is my h right here, that's 1, and then plus k, remember how subtracting 2 can be thought of as adding the opposite, so that's a negative 2 here for the y value of my vertex. Alright, I can also tell you a little bit about this, uh, this particular parabola as far as its looks, because a is a positive number, it opens upward, right? Remember it opens upward, if a is positive, downward, if a is negative, alright? And I can also tell you back here, you see the plus 1 right here in standard form? Well, see, that's going to be the y value of my y-intercept. I'm going to have a y-intercept. I might not have an x-intercept, but I'm going to have a y-intercept. And so what happens here is if you have standard form, you plug 0 in for x, you can see that you're going to get whatever the c value is right there. Your y-intercept is going to be 0c, so my y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. So that's kind of convenient to know. Now, to find the vertex, as I mentioned, vertex is very important uh, when sketching. To find the vertex of a parabola whose equation is already in standard form, like the example here, you either do what I just did, one, rewrite it into vertex form so that you can find the vertex, or there is a formula. You can use the vertex formula. So I follow the arrow up to here. The vertex formula, to find the vertex of a parabola, given standard form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero, then the vertex, the x value of the vertex, is going to be the opposite of b over 2a, whatever a and b are in here. See, there's your x value. The y value of the vertex, you plug this in, solve it, and you can find the y value that goes with it. There's another way, form of this that's a little bit more complicated. We're just going to keep it easy. We'll use this to find the x value, that's neither, the x value of the vertex, and then we'll plug that x value back into our function to find the y value. So you can either complete the square and set it in the vertex form, or you can go right to here. Now, since I have this written down, I'm also going to mention, we talked about the axis of symmetry being the vertical line that cuts right through the vertex. If that's the x value of the vertex, then x equals the opposite of b over 2a is actually also the axis of symmetry. Very nice. Okay, now we'll try an example. 
By the way, when you see me with the example and everything already set up, and I've already set up the axes, and in this case it looks like I've really emphasized uh, the negative part of the y-axis, it's because I've already done these before and I'm just trying to make it easy as far as accommodating the points on the graph. You know, you're using graph paper, you're not limiting yourself to only a couple in each direction, a couple spaces each direction, and you can be able to handle that a little bit more readily. Or if you use technology and sketch it out on your calculator or a Desmos or something like that, you can get a rough idea. But if they ask for a graph, don't give me uh, a picture of what your calculator says it is. Don't give me uh, a, a rough image of it based on looking at your calculator. I've had people actually copy off the computer off of Desmos and turn that in. I want to see points sketched. I want to see you graph it, not your calculator graph it. And we're going to do that. That's part Z. So given f of x equals the opposite of x squared minus 4x minus 7, standard form there for a quadratic function, I want to state whether the graph of the problem opens upward or downward. Well, right here, in ax squared plus bx plus c form, a is negative 1. So if a is negative 1, then it opens downward. Because if a is negative, it opens downward. If A is positive, it opens upward. Okay? And we are to determine the vertex using the vertex formula. So if you want to complete the square and rewrite it into vertex form, that's fine. It's a good check. But they want you to actually plug it into here. So since A, where I'm at, A is negative 1, and B is negative 4, and C is negative 7, although I don't need that into this formula, there's no C's there, I would get X is equal to the opposite of B, which is a positive 4, because it's the opposite of B, all over 2 times A, A is negative 1, so I have 4 over negative 2, which is negative 2. So my vertex is negative 2 something. To find the something, I've got to take the negative 2 and plug it back into the equation. So over here, I've got a little more space, f of negative 2 would be the opposite of negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 7. So the uh, negative 2 squared is positive 4. This part here is positive 4. So this is negative 4 because of the opposite signs. Plus 8 minus 7. So that's what? Uh, positive negative 3 here. So over here, my vertex, the y value is negative 3. So there's my vertex which I'm going to get back to in, in just a second because I want to do some graphing. It says determine the intercept. So I showed you a shortcut to find the y-intercept because it's going to be 0, c. So since c is negative 7, my y-intercept is 0, negative 7. However, to find the uh, x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. And again, I'm kind of out of space right in here. I want to have this available for graphs and such. So I'll put it right in here. Hopefully you'll be able to follow. It's not getting too messy here. I'm going to set y equal to 0, and I'm going to get the opposite of x squared minus 4x minus 7 is equal to 0. Now, if you don't like the negative out in front, multiply through by a negative 1. I'm a positive kind of guy. I'm going to still have the same uh, roots of this. That's going to give me the same values for the, uh, the, the possible x-intercepts. This does not factor, which is inconvenient. So I would have to use the quadratic formula here to solve for x. But I'll show you right now, because I've, I've done this problem in advance, if you just looked at the discriminant, which is 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7, I get 16 minus 28, I get negative 12. There are no real roots to this equation. Therefore, there are no x-intercepts. Okay. So it happens. Your graph might be completely above the x-axis or completely below the x-axis. And in this case, since it opens downward and the vertex is in the third quadrant, I'm guessing it's completely below the x-axis. It's not going to intersect. Now I'm going to sketch the graph. You may remember when I sketched it the last time, I created a table of values here. And I put five points with the vertex being in the middle. And then I used symmetry uh, to find other x values, one bigger, one smaller, two bigger, two smaller. And then I plug them in. Now I don't have to plug in all four numbers, as I mentioned before, these two will have the same y value, those two will have the same y value. 
Let's do the easy one. Let's plug zero in. Well, I've already kind of done that one. You plug zero in, you get a negative seven. Let's plug negative one in. I'm running out of space here. I'll put it up here now. So f of negative one would be the opposite of negative one squared minus four times negative one minus seven. Negative one squared is positive one, so this is negative one plus four minus seven. So that's going to be, it looks like negative four. So a negative four here, a negative four here. Those five points will be enough to come up with a reasonable sketch. So now, carefully graph these points. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This down here is negative seven. And one, two, three, four. This is negative four right here. So negative four, negative seven. Hopefully you can see that okay. Negative three, negative four. Uh, negative two, negative three, negative one, negative four, might be a little bit below, and then zero, negative seven is down here. And you can see the U shape from those five points, and that's enough to come up with a reasonable sketch. Now, my sketch isn't going to be perfect because I'm not using graph paper. Your, yours won't be perfect either, but it would be a lot better and probably what I can muster up here. Let's see. And there's my sketch there. Now what else do we have to say? It says determine the axis of symmetry. Well I talked about this. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes right through the vertex. So it has an x value of negative 2. Remember up here? The opposite of b over 2a? Negative 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Determine the min or max value of f. It's a maximum value because it's sitting on top of the hill here. A is negative. It opens downward, so that's the largest y value here. It, I think it was negative 3. Yes, it was. So I have a maximum value of negative 3. Remember, it's the y value of the vertex. And then it asks for you to write the domain and the range. Now, I mentioned this on the last sketch. The domain for these quadratic functions are from negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, is much simpler to determine once you have a sketch in front of you. And as you can see, it has a maximum value here at negative three, and then all the y values are below. So it would go from negative infinity to negative three, and again, inclusive, because we want to keep that, uh, that, that y value of the vertex as part of it.